יאללה לב טוב, עין טובה, מחשבה טובה והרבה הרבה שמחה. הרבה 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 שמחה, התכוננת על מקומו ועוד מעט ואין רשע. All right, folks, you are listening to the Shai Fleischer Show, broadcasting live from Judea, actually from Hebron, to the world, and you're part of it wherever you are. What a great schut. You know that word, right? It's a word that we use on the show a lot, schut, which means merit. What a great merit it is to be alive. What a great merit it is to be alive now. What a great merit it is to be a Jewish person returning to the land of Israel and having the great merit of being part of the... Great return. There is no greater merit than, uh, not that I know of, you know, maybe there is. But uh, to be part of this time, to be part of the great return, and to be standing on top of a building right now in Hebron, it's a little getaway place that I like, and uh, to uh, record the Ishai Fleischer Show. Really fun. Really fun and fun to be with you. Um, okay, so today's show uh, is a little different. Uh, I've got some interviews that I've done in the past few weeks. And conglomerated them into this week's show. But there's really fun stuff. We're going to have uh, Moshe Faglin, a serious interview about the time that we live in in Israel and how to understand America in this picture and uh, the current leadership. Very interesting. And then we have, um, we have David Khaliva, who is a master martial artist, uh, who, artist who has developed his own form of Krav Maga and goes around the country teaching it, especially to army units. Very powerful. Um, and we also have a very colorful character, a Simeon a Grafman, who is kind of a superstar in, um, in the Israeli world, in the Russian-speaking world as well. He speaks Hebrew, English, Russian very well, and he does a great job. He's got fans all over the world. And he's just a super car- a colorful character. Um, and he's got a take on who the Gazans are and how to deal with them. And, of course, we also have our very own Ben Bresky about a very interesting story. And that is Gan Saker. Gan Saker in Jerusalem, like our, our central park. My mom lives not far away from there. Uh, and so he's got the history of this, uh, of this park, which was going to be a cemetery and instead became a really happy living place uh, for uh, Israelis, Jerusalemites, and people coming to visit the, the great city of Yerushalayim, the great and holy and central city, the, the, the spiritual capital of this world, Yerushalayim. So uh, the show is going to be a lot of fun. So what should we start with? I say let's start with something uh, funky, and that is Simeon Grafman, uh, who I told you is this uh, amazing Russian Jew, who I got to interview when I was doing some work with Arutz Tov, uh, a few, uh, just not so long ago, and uh, real, really fun guy, and something fun to listen to. So here's Simeon Grafman uh, on, uh, let's put it this way, are, are Gazans, are there any good Gazans? That's the question that I asked him amongst others. Here's Simeon. Okay, I'm at Tov Studios today, and today's an, an unusual interview. We have somebody here who's an Israeli activist uh, for human rights, maybe a little bit of an ex-con, a would-be politician, and definitely a comedian, but somebody who's followed majorly on social media around the world with millions, I mean, talking about tens of millions of followers, the one and only Simeon Grafman. Simeon Shulman, welcome. Hello. How are you doing? How are you? It's great to be at the channel Tov. Tov is good, good Tov channel. Tov is good, that's Which right. is mean the, the rest of the channels, ah, not that good. That's why we're good. That's we're why Tov. I'm here. We, we also say in Hebrew, Hachitov, the Hachitov. Hachitov. most good. That's right. The best. Now, uh, I am, although I speak English and Hebrew, actually people don't know that I'm a Russian Jew. And my parents are Russian Jews. So you and I have a connection because you are more overtly a Russian Jew. And everybody who really knows knows that you're a Ukrainian Jew. You, I'm Russian Jews that Ukrainians that speak English in Israel during the Hebrew war with the Hamas. Well, That's it's right. complicated. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot yes. of stuff. Okay. So first thing, let's talk, about, uh, let's talk about the war in Ukraine for a second. Where were you on that, on the Ukraine war? Listen, I tell you, and uh, nobody heard me saying it before. In the beginning of the war, I was trying to understand what's going on. Right. Today, after almost two years, I believe that I owe an apology to Zelensky for making a lot of critics about his uh, presidency and uh, the way he's controlling the military and what's going on. I believe that 
what is going on in Ukraine, it's evil, and a lot of people dying. From evil from which side? Some people oh. say the Americans have pushed the Ukrainians into a war with Listen, Russia. In, in every Other war, people say Putin. In every, in every war, it's a lot of sides. Right. It's a lot of sides. Right. And that's why I was always critical also to the Russian military, also to the Ukrainian government. Today, I know that the most important in Ukraine is to start saving civilian lives of Ukrainian, try mm -hmm. to do everything to stop the war and to pray, <clears throat> put pressure on Putin to stop conquering the land. Right. In I don't know how to do it because I'm telling you why I'm apologizing to Zelensky. Now, when the war broke up over here in Israel, I understood that I'm, as a citizen, as someone who living in Israel, still don't freaking understand how we get to the position that we got hurt so much mm -hmm. on the 7th of October. Mm -hmm. And I still don't understand how we didn't beat the Hamas in the first week. And be but then, you know, the world put in pressure on us because of the civilian lives in Gaza. Then got to the world that didn't put pressure on America and USSR while was bombing the Germany, the Nazi Germany. Yeah. Other way, the Nazis will still exist today. That's right. And this is what the world should remember today: that Aza is freaking Nazi Germany of forty-five. And if we need to bomb them to make sure the all the rats in the tunnel dead, that's what the free world should do. Because all the terrorist organization today in the world using our democracy against us. That's right. They're using our freedom of speech, freedom of thought, freedom of rights against us. They're simply conquering us with our love. Look what's happening today in Europe. I think Europe gained by 7 October of attack to see what's going to start happening in Europe if they're not going to wake up. They should learn from us. But they already had. They already had in France. They had big riots. Yes. But they still in didn't London? understand. They still sleeping. They still thinking it's going to pass somewhere around. It will not. What is it? You say it's going to pass. What is it? The, 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 the terrorist organization. The, the jihad? The, the jihad. The, the Islam, not all Islam, the Kitsuni, how I say Kitsuni? Extreme. Extremists. The Islamic extremists, they don't care if you're Jew, they don't care if you're Christian, they even don't care if you're Muslim. If you're standing on their way, they want to kill you. They don't want to educate you, they want to kill you. The difference between us and Islamists is that we trying to do everything to survive. They trying to do everything to kill us. We're not equal. You cannot equal. And, and what, about, what about the civilian population? People will tell you a lot of times, okay, you can fight the terrorists, but what about the, some, the moms and the kids and all that kind of stuff? That's a big thing that the West limits us on. Right? Exactly. They say we can't fight a real war. Like, you can't bomb them because you got that civilian population problem. Yes, but all, all what you should do, it's not listen to all the news channels and say, oh, civilians. You can go to YouTube. And just look how these civilians react when we are died on October 7, when it was terror attack on September 11. These civilians was happy. They praised Allah for killing civilians people. These civilian people voting for Hamas to rise to power. Okay. These civilian people went. At 11 and 12 o'clock at noon from Gaza to our Israeli territories to rape, kill, take hostages, and take everything from the Steal stuff. Steal stuff. Forget it. Steal stuff. Steal how much you want. But rape and kill people. You civilian after this? No, no, no. You're not. Let me ask you this. You're a Russian Jew, right? A Ukrainian Jew, but we'll call you Russian Jew for the sake of the program. It doesn't matter where I am. I'm Jew. That's right. Um, no, but, but for this question, it is important. Because there's something about Russian Jews that is more aggressive against bad guys. We see it with uh, uh, Lieberman, the way he talks anyway. We he's see Moldovan. It, uh, he's Moldovan, that's right. Moldovi Bechlau, right? That's right. Uh, uh, um, but th there's, there's a more aggressive attitude that Russian Jews have always had. Um, 
At the same time, we even see how Putin dealt with Chechnya. There's something in the Russian culture that is more aggressive against bad guys. Are you disappointed as now as an Israeli in the level of aggressiveness, uh, like you said in the beginning, that like we haven't destroyed the Hamas yet totally? How can that be? Like, where's your, is the Russian side and you say, hey, what the heck is going on? We should be creaming these guys. Ah, wow, this is very complicated, very deep question. We should cream this guy. I think we losing the opportunity every day that it passes on. It's 40 days of the war, 41 right. days of the war. The world start forget the 7th of October. The world beginning to forget, beginning to forget what they didn't even wanted to listen in the first place. We losing this propaganda. What I mean propaganda, our side, because we are trying, even in our military, to be very fair, right. to be nice. We consider, we, you know, we're taking in, a, in account to lose our sons in the army, but to save Palestinian children, women. We're not taking risk. We, we're going into the houses. But is that we, good or not good? That's what I'm asking you as a Russian That's, type that's the problem. Right. From the God perspective, it's very good what we're doing. It's what making us different from jihadists. But from the real life that we live in now, it's hurting us by then. And we are pr producing to the world also only good things, only things that we're trying to do. But the pro-Palestinian propaganda shows horrible fake movies right. that we Jews killing them by the time. We, 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 we knocking on the houses. We calling them. We asking them, please. Stay away from this building. Hamas have rockets there. Hamas, have, please. And if they don't go, we don't bomb. But the world don't see it. Because, listen, we know that Hamas leaders own $14 billion. If really the world would wake up, they would freeze their account. They would freeze their account. That's right. These rats from Hamas, they don't even live. In Gaza, they live in Qatar, and Qatar trying to sit with one, excuse me, ass on two chairs. From one side, they welcome everyone from everywhere in the world, but from another side, you giving place to hide to the people who say that to kill women, to rape women, to kill children, it's okay. And you know what they always say? That we conquered their land, that's why they doing it. Is that, you, is that the reason? Did you ever, you know what? Let me is fly. it because of the occupation? Let me, let me fly with it. Okay, let me, you know what? Let me pretend that it is okay. Did you ever see, ever, in history of the world, somebody robbing the bank? Let's say we choose, we rob the land. Oh! And the, the bank, the, the, the guy who worked at the bank, <laughs> he trying to rape somebody who robbing them? No, it's not. The world is so confused. They, we, we, we left the Gaza a few years ago. Right. Many years ago. Yeah. 2005. We, 2000, we, almost 20 years. That's right. Freaking 20 years. It's two generations. But by the American count, it's two generations that you growing up your kids. We know that they teaching their kids to hate. That's right. And they teach them jihadism. It's not about liberation that's, of land. It's about destroying that, Israel altogether. That, that's why in Gaza, you don't have civil population. All civilians in Gaza grew up to be militants, from little kid to the older woman. Right. That's the problem. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned something there in the middle, and you kind of left it for a second. Got to bring you back to something very important. One of your main avenues of activism has been on social media. Yes. You're getting the messages out. Yes. But at the same time, you admitted that the Palestinian side, the Hamas side, has done an amazing job getting their messages out, what you call propaganda. Now, there's studies that are showing that TikTok is showing 5 to 1 or 10 to 1 more pro-Hamas videos than pro-Israel videos. I don't know where you get this information. There was it's, a study that was done recently. It's 500 to 1. What? Not 50. 500 to 1. But don't forget, Jews in the world, me and you, so do we, do we, have, a chance, do we have a chance to win this battle? And, and, and here's the question. Where do you get your news? How do you get your information? 
how do you get the stuff that you consume? You, we're not just what we are interested in. We're also, given, we're, also the, we're also under God, but we're also under what I call the almighty algorithm. Right? The almighty algorithm decides what we see. So how do we get proper news? How do we get actually informed? How do you get your messages out as opposed to the other guy? What, what I'm doing differently on my Facebook account, and I reached more than 40, different, 40, million, 42 different, 42 million different people in the world, in Pakistan, in India. In Indonesia, in, in I Indonesia, saw. In Indonesia. Right. Philippines. Everywhere. It's amazing. Because when I'm starting my videos, I'm saying my Muslim brothers, Mm. I'm Samuel Grafman, I'm Jewish, but I'm not your enemy. You are not my enemy. Our common enemy, enemy is Hamas. And Hamas is not a Muslim organization. Because to be Muslim, to be Jew, first you need to be a human being. Hamas is simply not qualified. They are not human. Not by Islamic religion, not by Christianity, and not by the Jewish religion. They're raping, they're killing, they're targeting civilians. Decapitating children's heads. I don't even want to go there. Yeah. But every normal person in the world, doesn't matter if he's Jew, Christian, or Muslim, he understands that my words are right. That's why they're sharing it and they're loving it. Because 85% of the Muslim community don't like to see what Hamas do. Interesting. And they don't want to see, but they don't get in this news. Answer my question about, yes. about getting the right news. Right news. How do you get, how do you get the right news out to, there? Today, it's not such a thing, right news. Healthy news, because true news, truth. True news. Every news channel that belongs to the government will say what the government demand from it. Right. People thinking it's have free speech for the news. News doesn't have free speech. But the channels, like channels, like soft channels, where we are right now, this is private organizations that paying for it. People, citizens giving money for us. That's right. To give them little bit light, little bit truth in this propaganda, this information, in this war. And like you said, the logarithm, algorithm, how you say it in English, it's exactly like a prayer to the God. <laughs> Whatever you pray for. It's what you get. That's how Facebook, TikTok build. Whatever you searching, you will find. Whatever you watching, you will get more of it. Stop watching horrible propaganda, horrible videos. Start watching spiritual, healthy thing like Channel 12. This channel giving us light against all the channels. They try and just to scare us, to make us that little so they can control us. And this is what we're fighting against. That's why I'm here, because here is the light. That's what we said, it's Tov. And actually, there's an easy way to continue to see that light, and that's by subscribing uh, to our English channel, which is called Tov Jewish News Channel. Very simple. And uh, certainly subscribe to Simeon Grafman, who's doing a great job out there uh, for, for Israel. For Asbara, but also for truth and for Jews. and for and for for the Jews, for the Jews, for the truth, for the Christian, yeah. for the Muslims, because we all human beings. And you know how I know that we are winning this war? Not by propaganda. Little by little, we win there too. When your opponent don't want to have a conversation, mm -hmm. when he want to kill you, it's mean you won already. Okay, Simeon Grafman giving us a little bit of hope that we're ready winning uh, and also giving us a lot of strength to keep watching healthy, true things here from a Jewish perspective at the Tove channel. God bless you. Thank you very much, Simeon. God bless all of you. God bless Christians, Muslims, Jews, all of us. And God give us a lot of light in our life and a lot of strength. All right. Thank you very much. God bless you guys and shalom. All right. So that was Simeon Grafman that I interviewed uh, on Arutz Tov, really a uh, cool dude, and it's good to know him, good to know a guy like that. Uh, and I really want to thank uh, Arutz Tov for giving me a chance to work with him a little bit. It's a lot of fun, and they have a great Hebrew channel. Their English channel is growing. Um, now, on to uh, the next segment. Uh, I got a chance to speak with Moshe Faglin. Moshe Faglin is 
uh, as you'll see, a, a great intellectual. He's usually in the Hebrew sphere, but I pulled him out, and I've been interviewing him for many years. Um, and he's uh, he's one of Israel's, you know, thinkers, and he sees uh, he sees beauty, and he also sees the beast at the same time. All right, enough for, with no further ado, here's Moshe Faglin, who I interviewed just the other night uh, on the Ishai Fleischer podcast, but I. We did it live on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, on Twitter, which I hope that you follow me there as well. Here's Moshe Faglin. All right, everybody. Shalom and welcome to my Hebron studio. Uh, I'm at the office in Hebron, right across from the Avram Avinu Synagogue in the city of the forefathers and mothers, uh, the city, the first city of the Jewish people in the land of Israel. What a privilege it is to be with you. And, you know, we're fighting for the state of Israel. We're fighting for the Jewish people's rights in the land of Israel. And we all know about the October 7th attack and the war that has come after that. Big question is, are we winning that war? Three months in, uh, Israel, on the one hand, has been striking very hard against Hamas. And a lot of Gaza has been leveled. Uh, a lot of people are, are refugees moving away from northern Gaza, at least. But on the other hand, some people say that uh, Israeli army has not retrieved uh, our, our hostages. Uh, we are... Uh, not fighting with a full force of trying to really eradicate Hamas totally. Tunnel system is practically, you know, two thirds of it is probably still intact. Uh, they still have a reserve of, of missiles. And all this while our reserves have been active for three months straight um, and more than three months already. And then we have a whole northern war, war that is just waiting to explode. So where is Israel in all this? How's our economy? Where's it all going? And another question is, Where's America in all this? America sent these warships in the beginning. A lot of people were very happy. Look, uh, America is helping Israel fight off Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas. But then other people were saying, no, this is a bear hug. America is not actually uh, helping Israel. They're actually slowing us down from striking hard at our enemies. Uh, and now we see a very strong push by the administration uh, to make a two-state solution. It's like, wait a minute, we just started this war because of the two-state solution. Now another push for a Palestine in Gaza, in, in Judea and Samaria, the so-called West Bank, and now a freezing of uh, a bank accounts of Israelis who the administration doesn't like their actions. So what's really going on here? Are we, are we winning or losing? Are, are we heading in the right direction? Are we going towards independence or more dependence on America and more uh, uh, succumbing to the jihad? Uh, one of the most um, powerful outspoken critics uh, of what has been going on has been uh, one of Israel's leading intellectuals, Moshe Feiglin, uh, who is the chairman of the Zahut movement and political party, a former MK and also former deputy speaker uh, of the House. He's been very strong in Hebrew, and I wanted to bring him on to speak with us a little bit in English. Moshe, thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, uh, Yisha. You summarized it uh, all, basically. So, yes, <laughs> Well, that's the summary, but but the, but the question is open. Um is Israel winning or losing? Let me just put it to you that way. Well, the question is, are, are you looking at the tactical aspect or the strategic aspect? Tactically, uh, um, we, we, we uh, discovered that we have here uh, a generation of heroes, generation, amazing generation of young Israelis that are the... the, the there's no words to describe their heroism, their connection to their identity, they will they will power and the, the, the ability to to put everything behind. I'm telling you, Ishai, uh, um, I, I don't know about you. I'm I'm not that uh, I'm not a little kid over here. Right? I, I I live here uh, in Israel uh, for for over six decades. Okay. I have a grandchild in the army right now, okay? Oh. Uh, 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 I remember the Six-Day War as a, as a kid. We never had a generation like that, never. Mm -hmm. Always had heroes. We always have had, you know, <laughs> heroism and, uh, and, 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 and great people. Never such a concentrate hero, hero, heroism of, of simple people. And, 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 and we don't hear enough about it because there's so many stories. But the bottom line is that is the good news, and it's a very good news. It gives me a tremendous hope 
tremendous, you know, I, I always believed in in the in the in the Jewish point of every Jew, definitely every Jew in Eretz Israel. We see it in 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 our in our eyes. It is. I'll, I'll just give you one story, okay, so you'll understand what I'm talking about. So you know, maybe you heard it, but your your viewers. There's a there's a police woman in the in in the, in the police station of of Fakim at the seventh of of October. Not a young lady, okay. I'm talking about I think forty years old, fifty years old. Not 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 a kid. Uh, she was catching three times hand grenades that were thrown at her and threw it back. Wow. And I'm not, and, and, and you know, it's, it's a story like that would have been in all the news, all the stories. We had, you would had songs already about the heroism of, about, about this woman, but there's so many stories about it. Nobody heard about it because there's not enough, not enough room in the media to talk about it yet. You need a lot of books just to put all the stories in. And, it's, and, and, and there's more and more coming all the time. Uh, uh, so we have here a generation that we can count of to, to, to be the leaders of the next, to be, the, to be our next leaders of, 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 of Eretz Israel. Uh, and and, and because, because we, are, we are the chosen people, we are the people of God, I, I have no doubt that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the, the Almighty did not bring us back after 2,000 years to, 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 the, to the promised land as a joke to, to throw out, to, to throw us back to, to the exile. We're going to win this war simply because we are who we are and we have this generation to take over from here. Uh, okay, so that, that's, that's the, so tactically, this generation of heroes is having uh, tremendous achievements in, in Gaza. They, they, they fighting when they get wound, they run away from the hospital straight back to the battlefields again and again, and and uh, and they're achieving a lot of tactical uh, tactical uh, achievements that you you, you mentioned, uh, killing a lot of the of the of the uh, terrorists. They, they they bombing those tunnels and 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 and, and so on. But these, unfortunately, tactical achievements that we achieve with with a lot of blood and, 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 and high high payment we we burying a lot of our uh, soldiers every day uh, uh, don't lead us to a strategic victory and the reason is because the previous generation the generation of oslo generation that uh, um, were was was created above the concept of the Oslo process. Thirty years of the Oslo process, exactly thirty years, right now, created a generation and a layer of leadership. You could not get into a national leader leading position, not in the army, not in politics, not in the media, not anywhere. If you were not Abandon, obey, obeying, totally obeying the Oslo concepts. So you have here a layer of of leaders that simply don't want to win the war because winning the war means to take over Gaza and to rebuild Gush Katif. And, and to flourish the whole land as a Jewish, as a part of, 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 the, of the state of, of the land of Israel, which, which, which what it is, okay? The Gaza Strip is the seashore of the west, the western, the, the seashore of the western part of the Negev. Hey, there's no, no argument about it. It's part of Eretz Israel, okay? There uh, was, I, I was just at a class that showed um, the Jewish connections to Gaza. For example, there's a synagogue there from the fifth century that has mosaic with King David on it. This is in oh, Gaza no, no. City. Gaza City Mosque has Jewish signs on it that they've only removed in the 80s, and there was probably a synagogue there beforehand. A, there was a majority of Jews and, and, uh, and Christian by, Christians, by the way, 
in Gaza uh, until the uh, 17th uh, century. Uh, most of the Arabs in Gaza are refugees of, of 48, by the way, of 1948. Uh, however, uh, uh, real victory, like, like the kind I'm talking about, and, and that is the only definition of victory. There's nothing to do about it. Victory mean, means take over the land. It's, it's yours. We're not fighting there for self-defense. We're fi fighting there for justice. But the Oslo process it, took out the word justice and victory <laughs> out of the out of the out, lexicon, out, out of, the, out out of, out of our lexicon, out of the Jewish lexicon. Out of our, our lexicon, yes. Right. The other so, side so, can say so, justice and victory all day. So this layer of leaders cannot allow themselves a victory in Gaza. Why? Because taking over the 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 the, the, the uh, we we conquered what's ours. The Gaza Strip means the end of Oslo, of course. <laughs> no, the, the, end, the end of Oslo concept. And their whole hegemony of a generation of leaders leans on, on that concept. It's the end of their leadership. So they looked for a definition of victory for three weeks before they, even, they, they, they went in after this, these horrors. They were dealing with what's going to be the definition of, 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 of what the, the aim, what the goal of that war. And they said, eliminate Hamas. Not destroy Gaza, not recapture Gaza, but eliminate Hamas. Now, now this, is, this is nonsense. Every Hamas... Every 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 house in 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 Gaza is 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 an outpost of 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 Hamas army. You have you have. I mean I mean I mean there is no Hamas and 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 a population and 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 you know civilians that are not involved. There is not such a thing. Okay, whoever, whoever is willing to open their eyes understand that the the enemy is the Gaza people. Every I mean there. There were kids going into Nachal Oz and Kibbutz Beri. They gave the match to a kid six years old, be chavod, be be our be our be honored. You know, you have to you have to you have to educate the, the young generation. So a little kid six years old is, is getting the match to to burn people alive in their homes. What are you talking about? Eliminate Hamas. You have you have here an enemy that you have to fight, just as the Americans fight the 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 the, the, the Japanese. They didn't say that the Japanese that the the, the, the uh, an enemy is the Japanese army. Japan is the uh, the uh, what was the, was the was the enemy, right? And no one left any uh, humanitarian humanitarian aid in 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 Nagasaki or Hiroshima or any other. J J uh, J J J J Japanese uh, uh, city that was burned to ashes. You have here an, a, a, a total war against a total enemy that totally, including all the parts of its society, uh, 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 is, 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 is looking to, to, to do to you exactly what he did. There's, it's, it's not a theory anymore. Okay. Although, although Moshe, there are a lot of uh, Gazans that we see in the videos. Once they get captured, they say we hate Hamas. The Hamas has destroyed our, 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 our you know, uh, this land. And and uh, I mean, there are many who say, you know, we're not part of this thing. And and uh, on the, I mean, let's be. I just want to be clear. In Judea and Samaria, according to polls, eighty percent of Arabs living in Judea and Samaria say that they support the seventh of October massacre. And we've seen videos. It's just like you said, of children and the whole society supporting the kidnapping and, and you know, being a crowd gathering around these cars and celebrating uh, the, the kidnap. Uh, but, you know, th there are people who are who are against it. There are people who want to be uh, residents of Israel in the future uh, who would swear allegiance to, to, to Israel. I think that there are some post-Jihad Arabs out there, but they are either either very few or they're subdued by the jihadists who are very, very violent, of course. 
Well, they declared that they are that they are a nation, right? That's that's what they declare. Uh, I disagree, by the way, but uh, and it's important to understand what they are. But they are definitely what we what I do agree with them is that they are not individuals. They're not just individual. They're not tourists that surprisingly landed over there. There are a group of people. It's, it's a good question what they are, but they're not the individual. And we are a nation. And they declared a national war on us. We're not dealing here with individual. It's a so-called nation, lo'am, as it, as, as it, as it mentioned in, 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 in the Bible. Uh, uh, we, have, we have here a, 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 a national war. And it's a total national war. And this asymmetrical war that we uh, took upon us, that we will look at them as individuals and look, look at them as criminals and take them to court. This, this ridiculous idea of taking these Hamas people who murdered and slaughtered and raped, raped that, and, and were caught to courts with lawyers. To prove what they, I mean, this is, this is, you have to decide, are you in a war or in a criminal situation? What, what, what are you dealing with here? So we're dealing here with a national war, okay? Not with individual war. That's, 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 that, that is obvious, unless you're totally out of, out of your mind. And, and, and unfortunately, we are. There are some parts in Israel totally lost their mind. Okay. Well, well, let's talk about that. Well, one, one, one minute. So, so, so these, this group of people, so-called nation, had an election, and they voted dramatically for Hamas, and they standing as a group behind Hamas. And if eighty percent in Judea and Samaria supporting Hamas, you can just imagine how many, how many of them. What was the percentage that that supports that that support Hamas in the Gaza Strip, and their whole definition uh, the whole so-called national definition is not about having their own state it's about destroying us and killing each one of us and doing to each one of us exactly what they did in Be'eri and Nachal Oz and they did it to the biggest peacemakers in the world, biggest leftists in the world, biggest, biggest uh, 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 atheists in the world, okay HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave you an example okay of what they after, they after you because you're a Jew, and it doesn't matter if you think you're good, you're bad, you with them, you against them. What's your views? What's right? What's your ideologies? Men, women, they after you because you are Jewish, just as the Nazis. Okay, and just as you did not look for the bad Germans and the good Germans when you fought World War II, you cannot do it now if you wish to win. So the Israeli Israeli uh, uh, government, unfortunately, because of what I said before, don't have the will to win. And the basic proof for that is the goal, the basic goal that they put before the, for the war, the goal of eliminate Hamas. Just imagine that the Brit, Brit, British people would say in the beginning of World War II, the goal of the war is to eliminate the Luftwaffe, the German Air Force. That bombing London. We're not in a war with, with the Germans. No, they're good people. We 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 in a war only with the pilots of, of those airplanes that that attacking London right now. This is so unreal. What's going on here? Okay. So so on one hand we have this generation of heroes. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, we have the previous generation of Oslo that pulling them back taking the victory from their the from, from from their from their hands they want to win they want to go further they want to they want to they want to bring back the 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 the, the uh, glorification the cover the national national uh, uh, honor. honor and the previous generation of oslo the leaders that came out of that generation are pulling them back to the the concepts of the 6th of October. Okay. So we've talked, Moshe Feiglin, we've talked about, um, we've talked about the Oslo generation. We've talked about the new generation. We've also talked about the jihadists and the Gazans 
and the the war of of societies instead of individuals, not criminal, but 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 jihad ideology, Nazi like ideology against Israel, uh, which permeates uh, Arab society uh, in in Gaza and Judea and Samaria. Um, but there's one more player, which is the which is a lot of people don't understand the this player's actions, and that's the United States. Uh, and it's a tricky player. And and I'll, put, I'll let me let me put it to you this way. I have a good friend who told me uh, that congressmen are telling him, "Why don't you guys come out more against what Biden is doing to you, what the administration is doing to you? Why don't you guys make a bigger noise about that?" Uh, because if you made a bigger noise about that, we could back you up. We could say, hey, this is hurting Israel, forcing Israel. And you wrote about this in an incredible tweet, forcing Israel to give all this medicine and food to our enemies in a time of war, forcing up, to, forcing us to give the electricity and water in this time of war, um, um, uh, not attacking with, with all of our strength. Uh, not attacking, not preemptively attacking Hezbollah. And the list goes on, all kinds of limitations. And now it's gone even further. Now this most egregious act, which is to pick uh, Israeli citizens, right? And to, and to freeze their bank accounts because if anybody does business with these, with these uh, four citizens, then that bank, let's say Bank Lumi in this case, will have their assets frozen by an executive order. So, you know, when I was thinking about this, Moshe Fagel, and I was thinking, oh, my God, Israel was created to protect the Jewish people, right? Was, the idea is, is that the state is there to protect the Jews. Now we are being forced, like some kind of capo, to hurt Jews inside of our country because some other country is going to force us to do it. It's like, it's like the state has become the capo and we've become the inmates. You know, maybe I'm exaggerating. I'm trying to make the point no, you're uh, not. here. You know. Okay, so so I was you know, and I was I was shocked by this. So, so so I, I want you to try. I want to ask you to, to try to explain this player, and and the 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 other side of this player. I just I forgot to say is, right now Israel needs American armament. It needs uh, 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 American support. America seemingly sent a lot of that support. You know what? The word America is not a right word. It's very important. It's not America. It's this administration. Because I think there's a there's I think there's more than one America, just like like you said, there's really more than one Israel. So tell me, tell me, you know, how how are we to see this administration? How are we to see uh, this ally? Whose ally is it? Is it our ally or is it Hamas's ally right now? Well, you you you'll be surprised, but uh, I have no complaints against America. If uh, this whole generation I was talking about, the generation of Oslo for 30 years, is quietly giving the United States of America every piece of its own sovereignty, why would America not take it? Simply take it. We're talking about, okay, uh, 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 because because let me let me tell you something, Ishai. Some Ishai. Uh, everybody's talking about. The fact Israel needs America and Israel Israel needs the the the, the, the weapons and there's no not enough uh, ammunition. <clears throat> Why isn't there enough ammunition against a ter terror organization? Israel is stronger economically ever th than ever before. How come the, the Israeli the IDF did not prepare in uh, enough stocks of, of of shells? You know. And, and ammunition. What's going on here? How come there's no tanks? How come the, what, what, what's going on here? Somebody along those 30 years decided uh, that uh, we can lean on the American support because there's no two nations over here. There's one you know, nation and we are the 51st, 50, uh, first uh, uh, um, star on the American uh, flag. And uh, Basically, what happened was that the Oslo generation, and I'm, I'm, if you notice, I'm putting the focus back on the Israelis. Right. I'll go back to, to answer the question, yes, but what do you do now? I'm not running away from your question. But I, 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 I want to put the focus on the real problem. The real problem, 
and 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 the uh, and the, the fact that we don't have munitions now is just one aspect of that, one small aspect of it. The real problem is that it, that this Oslo generation, okay, basically gave up on the on the Israeli concept, on the in Israeli idea, on, on the on the idea of a Jewish state in the Middle East. I know it sounds terrible, but that's what it is. The Oslo process was the last uh, uh, attempt to create an Israeli state instead of a Jewish one. Mm -hmm. And what I'm talking about right now is not from my imagination. It's word by word from Dr. Ron Pundak, who was the architect of Oslo. And Ron Pundak, in the year 2014, when he was asked this Oslo process that you created brought only bloodshed, so maybe you failed. And he said, I did not fail because Oslo was not about peace. Oslo was about Israelization of the Israeli society instead of Judea, Judea, Judaism or Judaization, or if I said it right, of the Israeli society. He put his hand, his finger straight on the point. So 30 years ago, 30 years ago, the Israeli side, Israelis side of, of, of uh, uh, the Jewish, the, the, the Israeli um, people, the Israelis, okay? We're always talking about Israelis against Jews. They're the two sides of the Israeli population, of the Israeli society. Those who see themselves as Israelis first and those who see themselves as Jews first. And it's not 50% against 50%. The majority are see them, is basically uh, Jewish-oriented, but the minority are the, who are those who control all the, all the leading positions. And they decided in, in the mid-90s to win this discussion that goes on in the Israeli society by force, basically. Use their power by using a geopolitic uh, 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 situation and creating the Oslo process in order to make Israel a civilian state, a uh, uh, state of all its citizens, and so on. Israelization of Israel. Now, in 96, they lost, the, 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 the only half a year yet, later, they lost the election because the Jews, Jewish part, thought Netanyahu will, 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 will destroy these, these uh, uh, Oslo process. But of course, he did not, he did not do this. However, so, and in those 30 years, those Oslo creators and those Oslo leaders saw how this generation of victory generation, the young generation that grows out of Oslo, losing any any hope from their ideals, not not don't believe in their concepts of uh, peace anymore. They saw all the bloodshed and the bus blows and, 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 and so on. And they decided that the whole experiment of Jewish state in the Middle East, Middle East uh, has no future and give the keys to the Americans. I'm not talking about a process that happened suddenly. It took, it took 30 years, but the bottom line is that the Israeli army has no, no shells and no bullets to the, to the rifles. Okay. I'm, I'm giving it to you. In, I'm, I'm summarizing it. It's, it's a long process. There's, there's a lot to learn of what happened here. So they basically stole the stole the state and gave it to the Americans up to a point, up to a point. It's, 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 people have to understand that up to a point that Blinken is sitting in the in the in the Israeli government discussions in the war cabinet. Blinken is sitting in the war cabinet while they're taking making decisions. American general is standing is being here in Judea and Samaria and basically uh, uh, working hand to hand together with the with with the uh, uh, chief commander of 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 uh, Judea and Samaria, and Samaria. I'm talking about Fuchs, okay, the Aluf Fuchs. Uh, what's what's Aluf? Major general. 
Are yeah. you... One of the, the general central command. Yeah. And because of that, we see how they how they deal with the with the uh, uh, settlers in, in in Judea and Samaria. And now it's not only the political level and the military level that is that that we gave a full control to the Americans of. Now it's directly at the, at the civilians, okay. who have no charges, by the way, against them. Those civilians that their bank account were were free, there has no charges against them. No, decided, no, no charges in Israeli court. You're saying there was no, said, there no, was no. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if Israel is a sovereign state and the American thinks that something they did something bad, they can ask Israel, how come you're not uh, uh, taking them to, to try? But there's no charges against them. So you, you you're passing above. The Israeli uh, sovereignty, Israeli justice system, Israeli laws, Israeli police, whatever you, you name it, and go directly to, to, to their heads of, of, of those civilians. And, and, and that, that is just the beginning. So we're talking about, and, 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 and all that happens because the Israeli leadership that despairs, totally despair from the Israeli experiment, decided to give it, to give all parts of Israeli sovereignty all, through all these years, to the Americans, I'm not. Go, I'm not I, I can talk more and more about it and how it actually and how the Americans developed it and encourage it to happen. For example, the INSS. I cannot leave this aside. Excuse me. The INSS, the most you know, the rec recognized uh, uh, institute, uh, inte intelligent institute for 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 for. Uh, uh, it's for, an Israeli defense institute, but leans heavily to the left. Um, and it's you know yeah, regarded money, as Israel's the money, the money, intelligence the money, think tank. The money comes from America. Ex-Israeli generals who sits there I, I understand that in order to be there and and and, and of course get get the, the world recognition and I, and I assume uh, good ben any kind many kind of other benefits as as well <clears throat> uh, comes from from they understand what line of thought they have to be in order to get there. And it's all funded from America. So that's the way it works. That's the way it works for many, many years. So, and, and, the, most, and the craziest thing is that those generals, most of the, those generals, as Caroline Glick uh, came out with an amazing uh, 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 news, that, that those top generals do not get into position without an, without an American per, per, permission. So in order to be a, 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 chief, gen, a, a, a chief, chief of staff, chief, chief of staff or, or even lower than that, part of the uh, of, uh, process of uh, acceptance uh, has to be through America. You have to, you have to get the, the, the American approval to be, to be a top commander of the Israeli army. This is ridiculous. So, so those commanders owe their position to the Americans. Mm -hmm. So what's I just left want to show Israeli, you what's, what is left in the Israeli sovereignty. So, so, so again, I have no, I have no complaints to the Americans. You created a state after two thousand years. You decided to give it as a, as a present to the Americans to do with it whatever whatever they want. And our and and these and this generation of heroes in Gaza. The bottom line is that this generation of heroes in Gaza giving the blood, not for Israeli interest, but for American interest. And what is the American interest? The American interest is to have a Palestinian state. Forget about the fact this is this is a, 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 a total stupidity. There will never be a, a Palestinian state simply because there is no Palestinian nation. It's not a real nation. Uh, having a state is the last thing they want. If they wouldn't would wanted a Palestinian state, they would have it ten times before. Okay. <clears throat> never in the history of mankind a group of people got a chance to get a state. And, and such a help from all the world and did not and did not uh, use use it because simply that's not what they want they want the, dis the mm -hmm. destru destruction of your state of any Jewish sovereignty on on, on any uh, uh, grain of the Holy Land okay so it's not gonna happen but they're gonna continue with this game in order to destroy us so but the Americans that's what they want there are part parts uh, of Americans I hope minor part that are that are uh, uh, the, the the that are not looking they're not looking for 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 the good of israel let's put it in a, in a nice word okay we see it in europe we see it in all these 
uh, progressive uh, um, uh, demonstration uh, that are in favor with Hamas and the horrors of the 7th of October don't don't they don't care about it. Look what, where we're standing now. The, the 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 American administration right now is running after the Jews in case, instead of running after Hamas. They 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 uh, freezing Jewish Jewish accounts in Israel, and on the other hand. Uh, uh, forcing Israel to give Hamas aid and gas that uh, with that they can continue the war and the war never ends. So that's the situation right now. You know, now, if you uh, now back to your question, what can we do? After all, we need we need that uh, we need that ammunition and we need that uh, uh, aid, so-called aid that they send us. Well, let me tell you something, Yishai. At the very beginning of that of that war that never never really started, okay. Because when you don't want to win, it's not a war. It's a kind of, uh, I don't know, a real war, it's not. Sevev, how do you, a round, how do you call it? I don't know. Uh, that's right, I round, think. that's right. Round, another, another big round. I uh, tried to ring all the bells in Israeli media and saying, I'm afraid, and I, and I said the follow, and people thought I'm crazy. But I think now people start to understand. When the Gerald Ford carrier came, was on its way to, to the seashores of Israel, I said, I'm afraid of the Gerald Ford more than Hamas. Not because I, have, I think they're going to attack us physically. No, but because of the process we, 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 we got into right now. It was obvious that the Gerald Ford did not come here uh, because of our interest. It, it came here because of their interest, and when they felt that interest ended there. I mean, the American interest, they, they, they left. Um, and, the, and the answer to your question, what do we do, is to remember what we had here in 1967, before the Six-Day War. All the Arab armies, the Egyptian army, the Syrian army, the Jordanian army, the Iraqi army, okay, gathered together in order to destroy the young 19-year-old Jewish state. America was not with us. There was no one uh, 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 American airplane. We, we fought with, the, with French airplanes. Actually, Amer the Americans put an embargo on the state of Israel in 1948 Tell, telling telling uh, Ben Gurion, if you declare a, a, a Jewish state, we're going to put an embargo, and they did. They they withdraw from from their uh, decision in in in, uh, in uh, um, November forty seven. Uh, uh, so we did not have the Americans. So what we did, we do. We simply realized then the, the Israel simply realized then. That we have to win and quick, quickly, and that's what we did, Baruch Hashem, with miracles. But we understood that we cannot fool around with what's going on here. So now you have that that situation with Gaza, and you know that you don't have enough shells and ammunition in your in in in, in your in your in your army. So what do you decide? You decide to to, to go to a war <clears throat> with the same Oslo concepts. Uh, 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 that you had before, which means that the war, and, you, and, you, and you're declaring it's going to take months, maybe even years, when you know that you don't have the ammunition. So, so when you don't want to win, okay, you're sending your army to a, a to another round instead of to, to win quickly. And when you do that, you need the Americans because you're using a lot of ammunition and, and to keep your army <clears throat> going round and round and taking the same places again. After the, because of the Americans, you, you brought back the, the Arabs from the southern part of, of Gaza to the northern part of Gaza. And now, and of course, they came together with Hamas. And, 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 and now you, they took over places that you captured before. Soldiers telling you, we, we, we're taking over the same places that we did at the beginning of the war. <laughs> so uh, uh, the bottom line is, if you decide to win... You don't need need the Americans. You need the American when when you decide not to win, and it's not the American problem, to, not the Americans to blame. It's the Israelis to blame.
I just want to show you Moshe Faglin. People are writing in as you're speaking. Not coordinated. Edgar writes, this American does not support this administration, this Biden administration. Cheryl writes, this American does not support the Biden administration. I'm Israel Chai. Scott writes, the U.S. administration is the most evil and corrupt regime in history. This American does not support them. <laughs> I really, it was like out of nowhere, people are writing almost the same words to just show that, that they are not with it. There's a lot of good people that are just, with Israel. Just imagine. I know. I know. Just, it's, it's, it's important that people are saying that. Just imagine an Israeli prime minister that talking directly to the people of America and telling the people of America, are you with us? Are you really with us? Right. There, there's, there's a war going on here between the chosen people, the people that represents God, okay, and the pure evil, the good against the bad. Which side you take not right now? We have to win. The good has have to win this war against the bad, against evil. Which side are you at right now? Look what your government is doing. They do not let us win a full victory against these Nazi, uh, Islamo Nazism <coughs> evilness that appears in the world right now. Are you are you with your government or not? If if an Israeli if an Israeli prime minister would have done that, millions of people would 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 the uh, uh, Biden administration freeze those accounts. But you know what happens in, happens instead? Netanyahu is not talking. By the way, let by the happen. way, we're, let it we're talking about let, let, Israel Israel under the Netanyahu government is letting those. Banks freeze Israeli citizens' accounts. Moshe Feglin, we're talking about America, but I just want you to know uh, right now there are people all over the world, including this man, Pushya Mitra Shunga, who writes, India always with Israel. There are people all over the world that are strong with Israel. Uh, and thank you for being so strong. Behind you, there's a sign uh, that says Yahadut equals Cherut. Uh, which is one of your slogans. Judaism means means liberty, means freedom. Uh, and I think that that's what you're talking and about. I, you're talking I about also have here, I have to show you one second. I look just like you have a picture of the temple. I also have, look, you see? That's right. There it is. That's right. Just, just that's to right. know that you don't, you're not the only one who has it. Okay. <laughs> certainly in not. Every, certainly not. In every, every home, every home in Gaza. That, this, that our heroes goes in. There's a picture of Al-Aqsa. That's right. And we have to understand that this is a spiritual war between evil and good. What will be the message that comes out of the Holy Land and specifically from, <clears throat> from the Temple Mount? Is, is it going to be the message of evil and death Islamic evil and death or is it going to be the message of freedom and 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 <clears throat> and holiness of Judaism that's the that's the real war that's why they have that picture and on their walls and each one of us and I'm happy to see that picture behind you to have that picture on our wall and ju I just want to show you that I don't have it only behind me I have it only in front of me. Look at that. See? There it is. There it is. There That's it right. is. Okay. And uh, just finally, my friend Moshe Herman writes, Moshe Faglin speaks the truth as ever. Shalom to both of you. Complete victory will be ours. Bizrat Hashem. Moshe Faglin uh, is the chairman of the Zahut Movement and Political Party, former MK, deputy speaker of the Knesset. Moshe Faglin, thank you so much for being with us today. You're very welcome. All right, folks, you are listening to the Yishai Fleischer Show uh, live feed. Thank you so much for being with us. Please connect at yishaifleischer.com. Check out our weekly podcast and our YouTube page, which is doing a lot uh, to bring a lot of messages, including people like Moshe Faglin, uh, to uh, your homes, to your ears. Sometimes people say to me, from your mouth to God's ears. And I like to say to them, from his mouth to our ears. Let's do that first before the other way. God bless you, folks, wherever you are. Stay tuned, stay strong, stay connected, and shalom. 
Okay, Moshe Fagelin, thank you so much for being with us. Great stuff. And thank you folks for being with us. I also want to thank the good folks at Prohibition Pickle. You know, Malka has been a little bit uh, sick uh, this week. Uh, you know, people, people like my, also my son Elazar, you know, th- there's this like flu corona thing going around uh, uh, Israel and uh, some of my family succumbed to that. Uh, they're, they're, I hope they're doing better. Uh, but some of my uh, show producers, uh, Yocheved Simon, Moshe Herman, uh, and David got together to get us some Prohibition Pickle for this Shabbat. And that was really, really nice. ProhibitionPickle.co.il so thank you very much uh, for 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 that uh, that that Shabbat respite and gift, and you can give that to others as well. That's prohibitionpickle.co.il. I um, still didn't get my new watch, my old watch back, so I'm wearing my my uh, retro watch guy watch uh, um, around. And I came out of uh, the military service just now, uh, but it's still on my arm, uh, and it's my Tissot. It looks really good. Check out their awesome watches there uh, at retrowatchguy.com. Uh, and uh, the good folks, I'm in Hebron right now, so how can we forget the folks that keep Hebron strong and therefore the Tomb of the Patriarchs, the Matriarchs strong? And that is hebronfund.org.org. Very good. Uh, and of course, uh, you can uh, support us by going to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Yishai. And thank you to all, the, 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 all those that do. And I want to thank the good folks at... Um, uh, at High on the Har, taking you to the Temple Mount. You know, when I'm in Hebron, I'm thinking about Hebron, but <clears throat> when I'm in Jerusalem, like yesterday, I'm thinking about uh, Yerushalayim. It was really awesome to be in Yerushalayim yesterday. I got to meet some beautiful people. Just the vibe of Jerusalem is so special, but the heart of it all is uh, the Temple Mount. So that's <clears throat> at highonthehar.com. Um, I was going to say forward slash, not forward slash anything. Just go on the tour, forward slash you. Okay, it's time for you to get up on that Temple Mount. There's nothing like it in the world. All right, um, so now let's go on to the next section, and let's hear Ben Bresky telling us about the story of Gan Saker and how this beautiful park in Jerusalem developed. It was going to be something very, very different. Ben Bresky, our intrepid reporter, take it away. This is a moment in Jewish history. Recently on Shabbat, I was in Gan Saker, Saker Park, the largest in Jerusalem. This special oasis in central Jerusalem has hosted many music concerts and other events. I have often enjoyed a picnic on Yom Ha'atzma'ut, Israel Independence Day there, with Yishai Fleischer and family, as we watched the IDF Air Force flyover. The construction of the park began in 1960 when Harry Saker contributed a significant sum for the establishment of an urban park in Jerusalem. After several phases, it was inaugurated in 1965. Harry Saker was a British businessman and journalist who was very active in Zionist and Jewish causes. He was a confidant of future Israeli President Chaim Weizmann, who asked him to help draft the Balfour Declaration in 1917. One of those drafts went up for auction in 2005 at Sotheby's and sold for a large amount of money. The following is from an AP newscast about the auction. Lot 217, the Zionist archive of Leon Simon, which includes the draft of the Balfour Declaration. I have a starting bid of $350,000, debiting $350,000. The Balfour Declaration is the extraordinary declaration made by the British government in 1917 that provided for the sort of moral and legal basis of a Jewish homeland in Palestine. And it said that Palestine should be constituted as a homeland for Jews. Well, the bidding went up and up, and finally it sold against an estimate of $500,000, $800,000 for $884,000 to an anonymous private buyer. Above Gan Saker is Givat Ram Cemetery, a small burial area created after the War of Independence in 1948. It was intended to be a temporary cemetery for casualties of the siege on Jerusalem. The Mount of Olives Cemetery, which dates back centuries, was off-limits to Jews after the Jordanian invasion. Most of the deceased were reburied in permanent graves in newly established cemeteries after the war. However, some still remain, 
in particular that of Rabbi Gedalia Moshe Goldberg, the Zvieler Rebbe, head of the Zviel Hasidic movement. His father was Rabbi Shlomo Goldman, the previous Rebbe of Zviel, who was able to move to Israel in the 1920s due to help from his friend Rabbi Abraham Isaac Cook, who went on to become the first chief rabbi. The son, Rabbi Gedalia Moshe Goldman, was imprisoned by the Soviet authorities who restricted the teaching of Judaism and sentenced him to a labor camp in Siberia during World War II. A famous story about him tells that a Soviet prison commandant ordered the rabbi and an older inmate to his office on Shabbat. The commandant said he would release them both if they would sign release papers, but being that it was Shabbat, the day of rest, both refused. The Soviet commandant angrily said that they would never be released. So Rabbi Goldman agreed that he would sign for the older inmate because he thought it was a matter of life or death, for the elderly man would not sign for his own release. The commandant was so impressed that he allowed them both to be released. Today, many still visit the grave of the Shreeler Rebbe above Gan Saker. During the War of Independence in 1948, Gan Saker was used as a makeshift airstrip for light aircraft. After the war in 1949, the Ministry of Agriculture used the land for a brief period to grow agricultural crops. The Six-Day War took place in 1967 with Israel's dramatic victory, but in the weeks and months before the war, the rhetoric and armed buildup from Israel's neighbors was of great concern. They were promising to push the Jews into the sea, and Israel was outnumbered. The Israeli government created an emergency contingency plan in the event of mass casualties. Gan Saker was one of the locations chosen to create a makeshift morgue and cemetery. But Israel's swift triumph meant it was not necessary. Jerusalem was reunited, and with it the Western Wall, Mount of Olives, and other holy sites. This has been a moment in Jewish history. Thank you to Yishai Fleischer. Thank you to all the listeners, and Shalom. All right, thank you very much, Ben, for that. That was really fun. Let's remember our good friends at Kosher Cycle Tours. Kosher Cycle Tours will take you around the land in a kosher cyclical way. Okay, around and around, Maglay Tzedek. Uh, they'll take you in, in, in the circles of holiness uh, in a Jewish way, in an awesome way. We'll show you the land. My good friend Aaron is the best of the best. So that's koshercycletours.com. All right, and uh, you know who else I want to mention right now? Uh, this is a... Uh, uh, something that we talk talk about in the past, and that's Tchelet, the blue string, and we're blue string Jews. We're 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 blue string is back. So check out t e k h e l e t tchelet dot com, and uh, that will uh, that will you know once you put that on, you are going to take a great leap towards redemption. You like that? I like that leap towards redemption. I like that leap towards redemption. Do you like that? I like that f- phrase. Sometimes I come up with phrases. You know, if you want to do me a favor, write me back a phrase that you like. You hear something on the show you like, just write it back to me. Be like, I like that. I like leap towards redemption. I like that. Uh, in any case, uh, let's do the final segment of the show. Uh, and that is um, um, uh, David Khaliva, who's a master. Uh, he's a master fighter. That's right. He's a, fi- he's a fighter. Yeah, you know, that word is an interesting word because fight is not always a positive word. But, you know, you need battlers. You need people who are willing to fight. You need fighters, defenders. And uh, David Khaliva is exactly that. I got to sit with him in uh, Tov Studios, and he taught me a lesson or two about self-defense, Israel style. Here's David Khaliva. All right, I'm at Tov Studios, and Israel is indeed facing uh, a terror war uh, in Gaza, maybe in the north. It's starting to heat up. And just today there was an attack in Gush Etzion where a car with terrorists came up to uh, the checkpoint and started shooting. And so there is a war on the nation. There's a war with the army. But there's also the terrorism that individuals face. We face it as individuals. And we have to be prepared to shoot, to fight back, and to really know how to defend ourselves. Uh, and, and to study that, uh, Israel's got some of the best people in the world. We have with us today Master David Khaliva. He's an advanced... Krav Maga teacher. He's got his own method called the shadow method. And I'm very uh, proud to have you in studio today. So I've been watching your videos and I saw some of the stuff that you showed us here in studio as well. 
<clears throat> very intense things, including the ability to ward off a stabber, a ward off somebody's got a gun pointed right at your chest. First thing, how do we deal emotionally with a, with a moment like that? Like, I got a gun pointed at my chest. How am I going to act, react properly if I'm in that situation? First of all, I'm <coughs> between the few instructors in, in Israel, for example, that have been in this situation in 2013. Somebody came to grab a, a convenience store, put the gun on me, and then I reacted without thinking. And I defused him from the gun, and he got away. But at least I didn't get shot, and the gun was on the floor. And of course, this is a luck, but it's most of the automatic response. When you learn and you practice, the body has muscle memory. And then it becomes over you in the moment of danger because adrenaline and body, mem body muscle memory become combined together to re give a reaction to a situation that you already know. Because the practice makes something very simple after you're doing it so well and so much times. So that's what I'm saying. Everybody can learn self-defense because it's muscle memory. And the body actually wants it. We want to be secure. We want to be able to defend ourselves. This is our main core to survive. So the instructor already has the tools and the knowledge is existing and everybody can take it. Right, but we got to get that muscle memory. We got to get that muscle memory. We got to practice the stuff. And I guess we're going to talk about preparedness today. And we're going to talk about it in two directions. First, let's talk about Israel, Israelis, and soldiers. Soldiers are oftentimes under attack, as you showed us before, trying to take their weapons. So let's talk, about, let's talk about soldiers, and then let's talk about Jews, friends of Israel, outside of the land of Israel, and their uh, state of preparedness. Let's talk okay. about soldiers first. So soldiers, as I'm in the reserve right now, and I've been in Gaza like three times already. I'm in the reserve right now because I'm already in the situation mode with my unit to go in and out to deal with the, the activities over there. But because of the automatic response that we are always saying to the soldier to be alert, to be aware, to react in the most doubtable moment, to control the situation, there is no much time. That's why we're always telling them that psychologically and physically to be self-awareness, including in different environments. It could be in Gaza, it could be in Yafo, it could be in Lod, it could be any town in Israel, it can be south in Jerusalem. That's why the soldier needs to always be aware of the situation. Spatial awareness. Spatial awareness and right. estimate the danger in any situation. It can be escalated from one to zero like in a second. Master David Khaliva, I was uh, watching some of your videos. You trained some of Israel's special forces teams, meaning to say these are already highly trained folks. Yeah. They already have spat spatial awareness, and yet still they ran into problems, including in Gaza just now. You showed me a video that some of Israel's elite troops we're having a problem when they were carrying a uh, stretcher back to the chopper. Uh, folks came to attack. Terrorists came to try to steal their weapons or to even steal them, kidnap them or the body that, or the, or the uh, wounded person that they're taking. So tell me about how we deal with that situation. This is most problematic because we're talking about regular civilian. And you cannot shoot any regular civilian and just interrupting you or preventing you from walking through the, the chopper or the, the, the ambulance. So we need to act responsibility, use the power of the attacker to avoid conflict, push him away without escalating the situation because everything is videotaped today. Everything is in camera. If you will get mm. things outside of the situation, showing the Israeli forces use maximum force and vulnerability and injuring civilians, it will come out outside very strong and very bad for us. Already outside is very... Uh, uh, bad publicity, fake right. news. So that's why we have to prevent these kinds of stuff to get out. It's very interesting that you're talking about this, and I'm surprised a little bit. Because you're a self-defense guy. You know, you're a guy with, you're a body guy. But you're talking about also Israel's image vis-a-vis -vis our self-defense. One of the things about your method, uh, the shadow method I've seen, is really about what I call the judo, and you told me that's not right, which is to use the other person's strength to kind of continue the other person's movement, you wanted to correct me. It's not exactly yeah, judo. I, prevent, I developed the shadow from simple, basic moves that regular attack occurred, like grabbing, like pushing. I saw it so many times in my line of work, as I work with civilians multiple times, the job of uh, the quiet, very, very emotional stress and a lot of violence. That's why I developed shadow for every person around the world can learn shadow, simple move, and use the momentum to get out of a situation without fighting, without being strong, 
without have uh, any uh, ability to have contained power or to grab somebody strong or to get out of situation that involve power, everybody can use shadow because it's based on natural movement, right. using the opponent power against him and avoid conflict. That's also giving me the opportunity to show ourselves good in the camera. We're preventing violence without encouraging that, mm -hmm. without contributing to the violence. We are very avoiding uh, uh, conflict and we get out in from the situation without increasing the situation, without escalating, escalating the situation. All right, so we're going to get to in just a second about Jews outside of the land of Israel. Of Before that, let's just one more point, which is I saw that you actually recommend tools. There are tools that you can carry that are legal everywhere. Of course. Let's talk about that. One of the things that we already have is our phone. Cell phone, for example, is a wonderful tool because nobody suspects that. And we can use our angle, the, the phone angles to uh, utilize vulnerable points, to puncture or to, to use the, the phone to evacuate situation from grabbing, from hitting, because it's very, very effective if you use it correctly. And we actually point it to the good direction with the points that we're going to learn here. So this is actually a very surprise tool because nobody suspects the phone. Right. Another tool is the Kobotan. Kobotan is very legal. It's not a weapon. Everybody can have it. Everybody can purchase it. Looks like a laser pointer. It's like a laser pointer, but it's not sharp. And it's from aluminum. And it's very light. And nobody suspects that because nobody can be on your keychain, yeah, right? Yeah, it's going to be a cheap keychain. You can be with your tools, with your bag, in the pocket. If somebody is going to hug you or choke you, it's automatic response because I'm pushing a pressure point, a vulnerability point, and the reaction is wonderful. You can see it on our videos. But I actually instruct around the world a lot of, a lot of organizations, most of the security organization, but not, not just. And I don't remember even one incident that somebody actually can resist to the pain that this is causing. That's an awesome. It's an so awesome So it's thing. a good thing against Lynch, for example. A lot of people that don't want to let you go or grab you or try to hit you from hateful crimes. If you don't have a weapon because you don't have a license to carry a weapon and you feel like you don't have nothing, this can actually change the equation. This simple tool. I have a 16-year-old girl. Uh, she's, yeah. she's, she's a, a Taekwondo black belt. But she would use this thing very well. Yeah, of course. What did you call this? Kobotan. 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 Very you can, good. You can, show, you can show her that it's very light and it's very special. And she only needs to know like 24 vulnerable points. Right. One of them, for example, if someone is going to grab me. All right. All right. Okay. And I'm with the Kobotan. Wait, there's a microphone there. Yeah. Go ahead. And then okay. I just push it like that. All right, there and you it's go. It's very painful, and it will give me. That's so right. So it's just a simple demonstration. That definitely did hurt. Don't, and, don't think and, for a second it didn't and, hurt. And it did. This is something that you don't need... Too much power for that. Right. The tools give you the increasable power that you need. By the way, we will be uploading to the Tov channel, which I recommend everybody subscribe to, more of your instruction videos that could uh, help people really stay safe. And let's talk also, you know, uh, the, the to Arutz Tov has wanted to speak now in English, reach out to the world. Let's talk a little bit about American Jews, Jews in the diaspora, and not just Jews. I like to talk about anybody who's pro-Israel, who's out there, Let's, I've got a lot of non-Jewish friends who fly the flag of Israel, okay? People now are, uh, are being identified as pro-Israel, pro-Jewish. Uh, how do you, uh, what are your recommendations for those communities? First of all, a lot of Jewish community, communities suffer from the problem of hateful crimes with anti-Semitic crimes, okay, against Jewish around the world because of the symbol, because of the synagogue, because of the temple. And what I recommend them is, first of all, to unite. Never be alone in this situation. He posted God, uh, deliver some uh, tools to people that are in front of schools with children that they can provide themselves more and more self-defense. Also, uh, be aware from places that are more Palestinians or pro-Palestine uh, organization. That will make you a, a target and will be easy to hurt you. So this is something that automatically you can use by, uh, you know, self-awareness uh, ability. The other things is to learn, actually learn what to do in a situation of being attacked. Okay, use like, like tools like we've shown, use other people to help you, and know what to do in a situation to hit and run, etc. That's why we need uh, a lot of seminars that can provide you tools. You can show in this, you can see in this, in this uh, channel, you can see other movies that we're going to do to you. So you can learn and practice and also be ready uh, to uh, uh, demonstrate and to do that with your partner 
so you can have a lot of more knowledge after you can see the channel. And you know, I do have a lot of friends uh, who are part of first response teams now in in uh, Philadelphia and in Teaneck, and uh, they're called different names. Sometimes they're called Shomrim, different things. Uh, but they need training, uh, and they need what you talk about: is spatial awareness and also uh, muscle memory. These are things that uh, that really need to be practiced. How serious is it out there? Do you think that really everybody's a target now? Do we do, do we, is, it, is, is, there, is there like, I was in one part of Israel today, it felt like war. I came to a different part of Israel, it felt a little more calm. You know, I'm going to fly to Florida next, next week, it's going to feel even calmer maybe. What, what is the level of, of, uh, of uh, what do we call in America, DEFCOM? What is the, what is the, uh, what is the preparedness method, uh, level? After the 7th of October, I don't think nobody can be stay calm. This is something that took us by surprise. An assumption is the mother of all trouble, okay? Because we are assuming that nothing going to happen. This is like a bombing that's ticking all the time. You have to be awareness because it can start with your neighbor. It can start from a hateful crime and spread around uh, Europe and around the world. It was already happening. And because you are a minority, when you're on time, you have to be strong. You have to be self-awareness. You have to learn a lot of things and never assume that there's nothing going to happen to you. Always assume the worst scenario. That's why we have to be prepared. Do you teach also people how to take a hit? You need to say, I tell my kids that a fighter needs to give a, give a strike, but he also knows how to, has to, has to know how to receive a strike. Get hit. And, and, and okay, still, still walk out of that. I don't believe in that. Okay. Because in my philosophy, if I use the momentum, I'm out of the fight. There is no... Uh, reason to stay in a fight if I don't have the ability, the stability, the power, the strength. Uh, I've never been in a fight. I'm using the simple move to get out of the situation. There is no time in the street. If you stay in too much time, a lot of people will come and right. make it worse. Right. Use the momentum, get out, and live another day. Very good. Okay. Great stuff, and thank you very much. No it's so important today. Let me just ask you one last question. I just remember the last question. Spiritually speaking, Jewishly speaking, is there, is there a Jewish side to the story? You're, you've developed an Israeli Krav Maga. Is there a prayer, a thought, a spiritual prayer uh, that, that is part of your method? First of all, I'm very uh, believer. I'm, 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 I'm a very I'm a faith, religious a man, and I believe in God, and all of my knowledge is from Him. Second of all, if you don't have belief, you cannot believe in yourself. If you, have, if you don't have an inspiration or someone to give you the tools and the strength. So everybody in Israel take it from God and then show on themselves when they're going to the battle. I never saw any soldier going to Aza before you see uh, Sefer Tehilim and praise and say the, the, the things that can give him uh, the, the strength to go inside and get out. This is how much the belief is uh, important to the Jewish people because this is what makes us special. The belief in God and the Israeli God, Adonai Had. Forever. Master David Khaliva, you teach the shadow method of Krav Maga that you've developed. Thank you very much for being with us and making us stronger, both physically and spiritually. Thank you for inviting me. All right, folks, we're back here on the Shai Fleischer Show. Thank you to David Khaliva for spending time with me at the Tove Studios. Um, and before we uh, finish off the show, we've had a lot of fun. We've heard from all kinds of voices. Uh, before we finish off the show, um, I want to thank God Almighty for the opportunity to serve Him uh, and to speak... Uh, from his land, from his good land. Um, and I want to thank you for your friendship, wherever you are. Thank you so much to our producers, Yochevet Seidman, Moshe Herman, Ben Bresky, Tabitha, and Lewin. We're live. Um, and let's just finish up the, the Torah portion uh, the, with, with thoughts from the Torah portion, which is uh, Mishpatim. And this is a very interesting Torah portion where we have some serious laws that are laid down for the first time in, in this Torah cycle. Uh, that we're reading. This is the first time we're he where we hear like legal tracts. Uh, but also we hear uh, about the borders of the land of Israel. And it just tells you right there, when it comes to the land of Israel, don't give it away. Don't negotiate. Destroy the high places of your enemies. Hold on to your land. Don't let them swoop in, come in, uh, not through love and not through hate. Hold those borders. Make a special place for God in this world. And that's, that's the, the, the ironic thought I, I had many years ago that still is with me today, which is the land of Israel is tiny. But if you make this tiny land holy and make one tiny place for God, like he's created a whole universe for us, right? Or at least a whole, 
you know, a whole world for us. You make a small place for him in this globe, then this whole world is going to light up. Think about that. A very big land, a very big world, all created by God. He is infinite. And yet if we just make a tiny space for him, where it's really just for him, just this land, just that holy city, and just this land, uh, a land for God, the whole world will be filled with God's light. Isn't that amazing? So it's, it seems like such a small task. Just clean up and make one place for me in this world. One make, make a tiny place for me. And that's the same truth, but also about personal service of God, which is make him, make him a priority. Make sure that, that we give him what, what, what he asks for, because the whole world is his in the first place. And I talk to myself, uh, I'm t- telling you not from uh, being a master of it, but being a person who yearns to be uh, somebody who gives God his place uh, in, in life and doesn't uh, forget God, uh, because it's his world. It's his world. All right, folks, you are listening to the Ishai Fleischer Show, and I do want to thank you so much, and I want to send you blessings from the good land, <clears throat> from, the, from the land that's finally sunny after many days. <clears throat> Excuse me. Finally sunny after many days of, uh, of rain. God bless the rain. Tadashem for the rain. But a little bit of sun is also good. I want to thank you so much from this rooftop that I'm walking around here in beautiful Hebron uh, and send you blessings of the good land. And thank you for being part of my life. And I'm thankful to be part of yours. <clears throat> God bless you, folks. More great stuff is in the way. Stay tuned. Stay connected. Stay part of it. And, uh, and we are here for you always. Plan that, buy that plane ticket, buy that apartment in Israel. This is the time, as we say, Dafka Achshav, specifically now. Dafka now is the time to connect Israel in this time of war. God bless you. Stay tuned, stay connected, stay proud, stay part of the story, stay loud. Lots of love and shalom. Shabbat shalom.